Hello, today I'm going to be talking about The Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan. This came out in 2015 um, and it is a broad history of the area of the world that the, the Silk Roads occupy. So that's kind of Central Asia and the Middle East. It talks about empire and trade and the spread of religion. I feel like the contents of this book could be summarised by me just reading all of the chapter titles to you because they are all like the road to whatever, but I'll just pick out a few. Um, Road to Revolution, Road of Furs, Road of Hell, Road of Silver, Crisis War, Black Gold, The Wheat Road, Genocide, Cold Warfare, Catastrophe, Tragedy. Um, so I, I really felt like this was a book of two halves. It's 521 pages long. I would have almost have rather it be, be two separate books. Um, but the first half kind of takes um, the kind of antiquity period up until the Industrial Revolution. And I found it so fascinating. It was an area of history that I knew very little about. Hearing about the rich culture of, of Persia and the kind of like ebb and flows of these different peoples and 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 wealth and um, and you know technological progress uh, was just so interesting to read about. The second half was more modern history. So one thing I found really interesting was about the the oil trade something i don't really know about besides which countries are rich because they have a lot of it um but the kind of setting up of of that industry and it kind of goes through uh both of the world wars i didn't realize that hitler invaded the soviet union and um killed all of the jews because he just couldn't feed them uh this is news to me and also maybe maybe speaks to how this is kind of like a very select narrative on um on how history has unfolded um because it is really focusing on its relationship with the middle east and central asia um but i found it especially towards the end um it gave me so much more context on like recent wars and international relations which i just didn't know about like growing up in the 90s and early 2000s it's just like Bin Laden was bad and Saddam Hussein was bad and I didn't know why and I didn't know how they were related. Just having the context of um, like their relationship to the UK and the US and other countries and, and how there's just this grand web of national interest and it's why we keep fucking with people in other countries is because they have resources that we need and we can't let the Russians have them and all of that. I just feel like I, know, I understand so much more now because it's connected all of these bits of history that I do know about. Um, with this kind of wider context. In that way, it makes a lot of sense. It's all one big book because the first half definitely gives you context for the second half, but it's kind of a shame that it ends It ends in 2015. And with like recent developments in Iran the last couple of years, um, I, I wish it had ended this year, you know? And it's, it's one of those things that even though the kind of earlier topics uh, were sort of perennial in nature, um, because it's, kind of actually about the the present time, recent history with the context of the past rather than just about the past. Um, I don't think it's gonna age really well, which is is quite sad. Like it would be interesting if you like republished this every 10 years and just kind of added to it um, because I would, I would find that really interesting. The main problem with a book about the entire history of a large geographical area is that you obviously can't tell the entire history. So the, he very much weaves a narrative thread that works mostly chronologically, um, but then it's kind of, in some areas, it's very unsatisfying when um, he's like introduced this uh, this new group of people and then you actually never hear what, what happened to them or, or areas that you're like aware were um, a really big part of like Western history, like the slave trade. While that's definitely detailed in here, it doesn't have like the depth and all of the context that you would need to properly understand how it related to the subjects in the book. I actually didn't realize when I started reading it, this was for a book club, um, that it went into modern history. I thought it was all sort of ancient history. I expected it to kind of like end circa 1900. Um, and it got to 1900 like there. And I don't think in the introduction he really explained that that premise of it's kind of like about the present and then weaving back all of the current situations in the present to to their historical origins and fleshing out bits along the way um because i really thought it was just like about history um and 
then was like slightly unsatisfied when I didn't get uh, when it was it was so focused on the narrative that it didn't get give me all of the facts of the places it stopped along the way. I think my main takeaway from this, um, besides all of just like the facts, um, is this concept that I think a lot of us believe that we're kind of at an asymptote of of, of like human progress. Um, you know technology has like boomed over recent decades um so has like the population of the world and it's very easy to just kind of think that these historical like rivalries between different factions and stuff um doesn't really matter or we've kind of evolved past it but when you see it all being laid out linearly like this it's just very clear that the um the global powers at present are still shifting. They still develop in the same way that they've always developed. And alongside that, our like national feelings towards certain groups of people or other countries are just so dictated by our relationship to them in the past to a degree that's like not taught to us at all, but is ingrained in us. It's so easy to grow up in the 21st century and think, oh, all Muslims must be extremists because of like these four things that have happened because we declare war in Iraq and whatever. and not understand the context of any of that and to be honest it's a bit scary knowing that we're all just kind of like part of this system and how it kind of ramps up towards like the cold war and and the high it's much higher stakes um because like our means of destroying each other have really grown um and we just have to kind of like blindly put faith in our political structures um uh, that's kind of scary um but it's also kind of it makes it feel much more like there's going to be another thousand years when you see these kind of like shifting sands than when you think about how much has changed in the last hundred years. So this has been a video on the Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan. Um, I didn't mention, but it has a bunch of really fun maps, uh, which is always great for, for a non-fiction book. Um, and I, I found it really interesting and it's just made me want to travel again. I want to travel again. Um, someday soon, soon. I want to get a train from Istanbul to Tashkent, um, but I, can you go through Iran at the moment? I don't even know, because it stopped in 2015. <laughs> um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, leave your comments down below. I look forward to reading them and I'll see you in the next one.